along that entire sympathoplegics, first let me discuss the drugs which will inhibit the central sympathetic outflow. Alright, so the drugs that decrease the central sympathetic outflow. Alright, now first and foremost what you should remember is, now in the central nervous system we have alpha 2 receptors. Right, in the central nervous system we have alpha 2 receptors. As and when if this particular alpha 2 receptors if they are stimulated remember alpha 2 receptors which are present in the central nervous system once they are stimulated they will cause decrease in the sympathetic outflow right they will cause decrease in the sympathetic outflow all right now whereas in the central nervous system we also have the beta 1 receptors whereas if you take the right if you take the stimulation of the beta 1 receptors so stimulation of the beta 1 receptors in the brain they have the opposite effect they have the opposite effect now what do you mean by this particular opposite effect that is when alpha 2 receptors are stimulated there is decrease in the sympathetic outflow whereas if beta 1 receptors which are present in the central nervous system if they are stimulated there is increase in the sympathetic outflow so we should give a group of drug all right we should give a group of drug which will stimulate the alpha 2 receptors and which will inhibit the beta 1 receptors all right so therefore alpha 2 agonist and beta 1 antagonist they will decrease the central sympathetic outflow and thereby they are used in the treatment of hypertension now what are those drugs which have the activity of alpha 2 agonistic activity so alpha 2 agonistic activity it is present for the drugs called clonidine right it is present for clonidine and as well as the alpha methyl dopa all right as well as for alpha methyl dopa so these two drugs they have alpha 2 agonistic activity whereas now among these two again clonidine acts directly right this particular clonidine it acts directly on the alpha 2 receptors whereas if you take the methyl dopa this particular alpha methyl dopa it is not direct effect this particular alpha methyl dopa it has to be converted to alpha methyl norepinephrine right this particular alpha methyl dopa it has to be converted into alpha methyl norepinephrine so you remember an important point your alpha methyl dopa it's a pro drug it is a pro drug so this alpha methyl dopa has to be converted into alpha methyl norepinephrine now this particular alpha methyl norepinephrine it is the active metabolite within the brain so clonidine it acts directly on the alpha 2 it has alpha 2 agonistic activity whereas alpha methyl dopa it is a pro drug that has to be converted into active form that is alpha methyl norepinephrine all right so both of these drugs we has alpha 2 agonistic activity and thereby they will reduce the central sympathetic outflow and the important adverse effect with both of these drugs either you take clonidine or you take alpha methyl dopa the important adverse effect is sedation all right the important adverse effect is sedation and another important point you should remember about clonidine is 
clonidine when an individual is taking the clonidine should not be stopped abruptly remember this point clonidine should not be stopped abruptly if the individual abruptly stops clonidine that can lead to what is called rebound hypertension all right so abrupt abrupt stoppage of this particular clonidine will lead to what is called rebound hypertension this is a very important point what an individual has to remember when the individual is taking clonidine now for example if the individual has developed rebound hypertension because of abrupt stoppage of clonidine what is the treatment of choice this is another important multiple choice question so rebound hypertension which is caused by abrupt stoppage of clonidine is treated by fentolamine is treated by fentolamine this is another important mcq so therefore remember an important precaution what you have to give to the individuals an individual whoever is taking clonidine should be advised saying that this particular drug should not be stopped abruptly if the individual stops abruptly the individual will develop rebound hypertension so remember this point therefore this drug is not suitable for people having a traveling job like business executives who are likely to miss the dose all right so that is an important point about your clonidine now you take some of the important adverse effect with your methyl dopa as such i have said you both of these drugs they will cause the sedation whereas exclusively with methyl dopa there is an important adverse effect that is hemolytic anemia that is hemolytic anemia so methyl dopa will cause hemolytic anemia as an adverse effects and remember both these drugs you take clonidine and as well as alpha methyl dopa both of them they are very much safe in pregnancy right they are very much safe in pregnancy but among these two drugs that is in, in between the clonidine and as well as alpha methyl dopa what is the drug which is preferred in pregnancy it is your alpha methyl dopa so alpha methyl dopa this is preferred drug in pregnancy in between your clonidine and as well as alpha methyl dopa now you take this particular another important point about clonidine whenever you give this clonidine by intravenous route right so whenever you give this particular clonidine by intravenous route this lead to rapid rise in blood pressure followed by prolonged fall this is an important point you should remember whenever you give clonidine initially right initially it will increase the blood pressure of the individual and followed by that right followed by a prolonged fall right followed by the prolonged fall of the blood pressure now you should remember why there is initial increase in the blood pressure of the individual the initial raise is due to activation of vascular post synaptic alpha 2 receptors all right this initial raise is due to activation of post synaptic alpha 2 receptors all right so this is the cause for initial raise of the blood pressure all right next whereas so this is the story when you give this particular clonidine intravenously whereas you give this particular same clonidine in the oral formulation 
right you give this clonidine in the oral formulation oral formulation it is slowly absorbed and such high concentrations they are not attained so orally it results only in antihypertensive effect all right so orally there is slow absorption high concentration is not attained so only antihypertensive effect is present whenever you give this clonidine orally i'll repeat once again whenever you give this particular clonidine intravenously initially there is rapid rise in blood pressure followed by prolonged fall why is that initial rapid rise in the blood pressure because of high concentrations of the clonidine will cause the activation of the post synaptic alpha 2 receptors that will cause increase in the blood pressure of the individual whereas whenever you give this particular clonidine orally that will cause the slow absorption from the gastrointestinal tract and thereby there is no high concentration of this particular drug and thereby when you give orally it has only antihypertensive effect but not increase in the blood pressure of the individual next now in this particular group of drugs right we have discussed two important drugs that is clonidine and as well as alpha methyl dopa now apart from these two drugs there are new drugs which will decrease the central sympathetic outflow now what are those new drugs those new drugs they include moxonidine and the other drug is rilmenidine so moxonidine and rilmenidine these are the congeners of clonidine with longer half life these are the congeners of clonidine with longer half life and remember these drugs that is the newer drugs these drugs they are selective for imidazoline receptors that modulate the central alpha 2 receptor activity all right so what we have discussed is in the central nervous system either alpha 2 receptor stimulation or beta 1 antagonist they will decrease the sympathetic outflow so we have discussed about the alpha 2 receptor agonist that is your clonidine and as well as alpha methyl dopa and as well as the newer drugs whereas you take the beta 1 receptor antagonist beta 1 receptor antagonist they include the atenolol and as well as the metoprolol so these particular drugs they will reduce the central sympathetic outflow by inhibiting the beta 1 receptors which will increase the central sympathetic outflow so remember if beta 1 receptors if they are stimulated then there is increase in the central sympathetic outflow whereas when beta 1 receptors when they are inhibited there will be decrease in the central sympathetic outflow which is achieved by beta 1 receptor antagonist like atenolol and as well as metoprolol and another important point this particular beta 1 antagonist they have the anti hypertensive effect not only by inhibiting the central sympathetic outflow there are several mechanisms by which the beta 1 antagonist they act as anti hypertensives the other mechanism is the beta 1 antagonist they will also reduce the heart rate of the individual because beta 1 receptors they are also present in the heart so they will also reduce the heart rate of the individual so once the heart rate of the individual is reduced thereby the cardiac output reduces once the cardiac output is reduced the blood pressure of the individual will be reduced now the another important point is you take all of these drugs right either you take alpha 2 agonist or you take the beta 1 antagonist all of these drugs they will result in sodium and as well as water retention on prolonged use right remember all these particular drugs they will cause sodium and water retention on prolonged use now 
in order to avoid that sodium and water retention on prolonged use what we have to do is we have to add diuretics right we have to add diuretics so diuretics once they are added to these particular agents they will restore the sensitivity of this particular activity of antihypertension.